Good morning, everybody. What a great turnout. And I know that there are quite a few other rooms that are filled to capacity as well, too, with our other attendees. Uh, so we welcome them as well. It is all being streamed so that they can all see what's happening and to hear uh, from us as well. Good morning. I'm Daphne Kwok, and I'm very honored to be chair of the President's Advisory Council Commission on Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. And I want to welcome all of you to our very, very first commission event. I'm joined by my fellow commissioners, Delauer Saeed. Where's Delauer? He's here. And he's chair of our commission's Economic Development Committee. We also have two other commissioners who are here with us today, Rosita Lee of Las Vegas, and then Kampa Tapavong of Fresno. Our commission's mandate is to improve the quality of life and opportunities for Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders through increased access and participation in federal programs. The commission identified the economy as a top priority, and today's summit is a prime example of how we are fulfilling our mission to be a two-way link between the federal government and the AAPI community. We are honored to have with us today many of President Obama's senior AAPI administration officials. And we are extremely proud to have one of the three Asian American Pacific Islander cabinet secretaries, Secretary of Commerce, Gary Locke. Who, that's right, let's give him a hand. And Secretary Locke, also um, one of the other hats that he wears, he is also co-chair of the White House Initiative on Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. So we thank Secretary Locke for his steadfast leadership of the initiative and supporting our premier event. I hope today's information, dialogue, and networking will result in strengthening collaboration between the federal government and the Asian American and Pacific Islander community. Our commission encourages all of you, our constituents, to become actively engaged with the federal government. We'd like to hear from you. We want to know your issues you're facing, and most importantly, along with your suggestions for solutions. Now I'd like to bring up my fellow commissioner, Delauer Saeed, CEO of Yonja Media Group, located here in the Valley, who initiated today's summit. And thank you, Delar, so much for your leadership and for, uh, for the rest of the day's events. Thank you. Thank you, Daphne, for your um, kind words as well as the leadership of the commission. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. And thank you for joining us at the inaugural White House Initiative Summit on Entrepreneurship and Small Business Growth. Um, as Daphne mentioned, we are deeply honored to have Secretary Locke join us as our guest of honor. And we're also thrilled to have a strong representation from all um, uh, uh, levels of government. Uh, you know, we've got folks from um, the, the, the White House, State of California, as well as, uh, as, well as uh, some city and state officials. I'd like to especially welcome Congressman Mike Honda, who, as you know, also chairs uh, the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus. And, and as you know, he's the, one of the most longstanding and most passionate advocate of our community. And it's always wonderful to have Congressman Honda part of our gatherings. Also, a warm welcome to Anish Chopra, who is Chief Technology Officer um, a, a, at, the, at the White House. Jinja Liu, who serves as the Senior Counselor uh, as part of the White House National Economic Council. And Todd Park, who is also CTO with the Department of Health and Human Services. Um, we're also fortunate to have some uh, great representation from the state of California. We are joined by John Chiang, who serves as controller with the state of California, is, the, is really our chief fiscal officer, a big job uh, for him in the coming year and beyond. Um, and Joe Ayala, who is the director of the Office of Economic Development for, for, for Governor Jerry Brown. Um, also, I'm very pleased to have our, our local uh, California State Assembly member, Paul Fong, join us as well. So it's great to have great representation from all levels of the government. Today's summit is truly a first of its kind event in which hundreds of entrepreneurs um, and small business leaders from our community are coming together with policymakers um, and, and key leadership from the White House, from the state of California, as well as locally in the heart of Silicon Valley. And it is especially heartwarming to see 
that this summit brings together one of the most diverse gatherings of, of Asian American entrepreneurs and business leaders, a gathering that, uh, may I say, represents virtually an entire spectrum of our very, very rich heritage as a community. Um, I'd like to start by thanking uh, a, few individual, a few individuals and partners without whom uh, this summit uh, would have not been possible. First of, uh, first of all, as Daphne alluded to, uh, the Commission works very closely with the White House Initiative on Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders office. That office is led by Kiran Ahuja. Kiran is actually here with us today. Kiran, uh, Kiran her, and her team have been absolutely phenomenal and very, very supportive of our efforts. I'd like to especially call out Mia Saika Chen, who's worked with me uh, for, for many weeks uh, tirelessly uh, coordinating this event across various government agencies and departments. So thank you, Mia, for your help. Also want to thank our colleagues at the Commerce Department as well as the Small Business Administration. It's been really a great team effort across many colleagues at, in the federal government, and we appreciate all their leadership. Secondly, our partners um, in the Valley. You know, as you know, uh, uh, Silicon Valley thrives on a very robust and rich um, ecosystem of nonprofit um, groups, uh, groups that are, uh, that are helping develop the next generation of entrepreneurs in our community. I actually personally have had the privilege of leading one such organization in a voluntary, in a voluntary capacity in the past, and I know firsthand the energy and the effort folks put in in, 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 in training our entrepreneurs in our community. And we were fortunate to have the support of over 12 such nonprofit groups over the course of the last few weeks who were instrumental in getting the word out. And the fact that we have more than 700 folks that are showing up today from all, from all across our community. So we want to thank each one of them for their great help. I wish I could name everybody, but I don't have the time to do so. And I should also say here that I really think this is the beginning of our collaboration and our work together um, as, as stakeholders. And we certainly hope to carry that on in the months and years to come. And finally, Microsoft. Microsoft has been phenomenal and have been uh, very kind with their generous support, and we appreciate uh, their help. And I want to especially thank uh, Sid Espinoza and his team um, on, on the great effort, and um, uh, we, we, we definitely appreciate um, uh, their assistance with the, with the summit. Please join me in giving a warm round of applause to all these folks. As we enter the new year, economic recovery is um, undoubtedly uh, the most pressing challenge and a core priority facing the U.S. Um, and the Valley here, which leads the world in, in, in innovation, plays a very special role in that, and I think we are all aware of that. Um, it, 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 it especially provides leadership in key sectors of, the, sectors of the economy, in the information economy, in the knowledge economy, in sectors like software, internet, technology, broadly speaking, and now increasingly clean tech. And we know that our Asian American entrepreneurs and business leaders are at the forefront. They are actually playing a leadership role in driving that innovation and creating that economic value. So whether you are a small business owner today who are in the audience or an entrepreneur, or if you're aspiring to be an entrepreneur, you will play arguably the most profound, and may I say a game-changing role, in an innovation-led economic recovery of this country and of the world indeed. And that is precisely why we are here today, to start this conversation with you as the Asian American entrepreneur and business community, to start this dialogue with you, um, on, and, and to have a conversation on two fronts. One, to share with you the efforts that the president has made over the last two years to support entrepreneurs and businesses in our community. And there will be lots of details that will be shared through the course of the day today, and I hope you will find that uh, useful because I do feel there is a dearth of um, familiarity with a lot of the programs that have been rolled out. And number two, and very importantly, uh, we are here to listen to you um, and, to, and to get your feedback on how can we sustain these efforts by building on them further. Our agenda will flow as, as, as follows. Uh, we will kick off the summit with, uh, with our secretary's uh, keynote uh, speech. After his speech, um, we will have actually Joy Ayala from, from uh, the Office of Economic Development share the California perspective briefly. And then we will start with a broad panel discussion on, on just talking about a, a, a whole host of efforts that are being made to support entrepreneurs uh, and small businesses. That session will be moderated by Kiran Ahuja. 
After that, we go into uh, five workshops. These are very topical, niche workshops, and they cover a, a pretty broad set of topics. We were very thoughtful about what to cover that, uh, starting from venture financing and the role of SBA loans, how they work how they may work in conjunction with venture capital investment, um, the President's Export Initiative, how is that helping folks who may want to go global um, with, their, with their business, federal contracting, you know, that's an area where we've received a lot of feedback, a lot of input from our community, uh, and this is your opportunity to get up to speed on how to become a, a federal contractor, and also to share your feedback about the procurement process. Um, finally, we have two industry-themed workshops. You know, clean tech and healthcare IT are two uh, very vibrant and key parts of the economy here, and they're in many ways transformational to our economy locally and, and also um, across the U.S. Uh, we have um, great panelists, um, including from VC firms, as well as um, from, the, from the federal government, who will talk about how the government is supporting, uh, especially uh, from the Recovery Act, these two very critical parts of the emerging economy. The afternoon session will be um, kicked off by Congressman Honor's remarks. After that, we will have a panel that will be led by um, Ginger Liu, and Ginger will lead a discussion with uh, Anish Chopra and Todd Park on innovation in data management. And those of you in the room who, who work in the Valley and have grappled with the challenge of complex data management in the enterprise world can surely appreciate uh, the, the complexity uh, and the importance of managing this data and technology at the government levels. And I hope that not only you will benefit from their insights, but also will provide feedback on how we are tackling this challenge here in the Valley. Um, I'm going to now spend a few minutes talking about um, Secretary Locke's background, and then we'll have the privilege of uh, inviting him to speak. Um, Secretary Locke was appointed by President Obama as the 36th uh, Secretary of Commerce. As the first Chinese, he's the, actually the first Chinese American to hold a post in the U.S. cabinet, and that is, that is incredibly powerful um, and has a distinctly American story, and may I say, a very inspiring Asian American story, both as a parent and uh, reading about his uh, background, it is, it is almost moving. Uh, his grandfather immigrated from China to Washington State. Uh, he initially found employment as a servant in exchange for English lessons. Um, his father, who was also born in China, was a small business owner. He, he operated a grocery store, a grocery store where Secretary Locke um, uh, worked uh, part-time while he was uh, getting his education at, at Seattle's public uh, um, uh, school system. Um, clearly, that strong work ethic and determination you know, took him to the highest office in Washington. He was a two-term governor of the state of Washington. And during his tenure, he, is, he, 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 he made a big headway in opening Washington state businesses to the global marketplace, uh, made 10 very productive uh, trade missions to China, to uh, parts of Asia, uh, Europe, and Mexico. Um, and, and at the conclusion of his term, uh, Washington state trade with China is more than $5 billion a year. Um, I saw a story in Washington Post uh, which recently chronicled his leadership style, and I thought I would share that with you. Um, it, it was noted that his office in, at, the, at, at the Commerce Department features a 60-foot-long Chinese dragon kite. So that's pretty huge. And it, it, it hovers on his desk. Um, and while clearly it, it, it reflects, it's a symbol of you know, his, his, his heritage as a, as a, as a Chinese-American. Equally importantly, um, the, the paper notes, it was put together, and actually I confirmed that with him this morning, uh, that it was put together uh, by him along with some of his colleagues over a weekend. And that shows a hands-on, you know, roll-up-your-sleeve leadership style. And, and as I read about that, I felt like we can relate to that in the Valley. I mean, many of us have you know, built startups, build businesses from our bare hands in our homes, in our garages, and often those companies have gone on to become global brands in the world. Uh, but we have retained that hands-on culture, that approachable culture, that down-to-earth culture, which is what makes this valley unique. 